Okay, so whenever you see a patient post plasty from the cath lab, always try to figure out which flow grade is achieved post plasty in these patients and how we grade the flow rate. It's TV flow grade, thrombolysis, myocardial infarction, flow grade. So it is from zero to three. Zero means zero means there is a complete cutoff. There is a complete cutoff of the vessel beyond which there is no flow. When the dye was injected, zero flow was there. So it is TME zero. TME three means the lesion has been stented and opened up, and now the flow is so achieved that it is as good as a normal coronary artery. So TME three is the best flow which can be achieved after post plasty. Now, in between are TME flow grade one and TME flow grade two. So TME one means the dye has crossed the lesion, but it is not filling the distal coronary arteries. It is very thin, very faint flow is there. And in TME2 flow grade means the dye has crossed the lesion. It is filling the coronary artery distal to it lesion, but the flow is slow. So why it is important to understand that? So between TME grade 2 and 3, so those, those patients in which TME grade 3 flow can be achieved, those patients have a better survival as compared to TME grade 2, in which the flow is achieved, but it is slow flow. Although many factors are also involved in the long-term prognosis, but this you need to understand because TME flow grade 2 can have symptoms weaker uh, or they, have, they can uh, have still persistent some sort of angina or some symptoms like that in the future. But that's the best flow which can be achieved post plasty uh, based on the coronary anatomy and vasculature. So next time when you receive a patient post plasty, plasty from cath lab, always try to figure out which TME flow grade is achieved, whether it's two or TME grade flow two, slow flow or TME grade flow three. So I hope this helps. Do read more about it.